Hi, I'm Lawrence Krauss, and I thought I'd take a few moments to talk to you about some of the aspects of uh, the physics of climate change that are uh, relevant to my new book. Um, some of the things that may not seem intuitive or surprising, um, maybe to pique your interest in thinking about the subject. The first thing I wanted to talk about was uh, uh, the fact that mo people recognize that carbon dioxide makes up only 0.04% of the atmosphere, four ten thousandths of the atmosphere. And some people have argued that, look, if carbon dioxide is such a small component of the atmosphere, how can it affect the global dynamics that uh, uh, affect weather and climate if it's such a small percentage of the atmosphere? To, to discuss that, I want uh, there's an example I first learned from discussions with my friend Lord Martin Rees, who's uh, the astronomer Al in England and also the former president of the Royal Society. He pointed out that if you just take a piece of paper and uh, with this piece of paper, I can I can shield myself from the sun. I can hold it between me and the sun. I can't see the sun. I can I cast a shadow on myself. Okay. Now this piece of paper, the average piece of paper, weighs about 0.16 ounces, which makes it about one one hundredth of a pound. Now think about how much, what the weight of the atmosphere is above this piece of paper. The atmospheric pressure on the Earth in these same units of pounds uh, that we that are used in the United States is fourteen point seven pounds per square inch. If you take the area of a given piece of paper, that's about that means there's about 1,290 pounds of atmosphere above this piece of paper between here and space. Okay, this piece of paper, on the other hand, is one one hundredth of a pound. That means this piece of paper basically represents less than one part in in something like one hundred thousandth of the atmosphere in terms of weight. Yet, the single piece of paper can dramatically affect the amount of energy I'm getting from the sun. And, and, and so something that's a small fraction of the atmosphere can have a big effect. Another thing which is kind of interesting actually goes back much f further than, uh, than you might imagine people started thinking about this. But it, one of the other things that's said about carbon dioxide is, look, the, how can humans, uh, the puny humans, be affect something as significant as the whole Earth's climate? And uh, there was a calculation, an estimate done by a... Um, uh, a Swedish sort of geoscientist uh, 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 named Arvid Hogborn in the mid 1800s. It was first discussed uh, uh, widely uh, when it was written up. Uh, the description was written up in a paper by the Nobel Prize winning chemist Sven Harrenius in Sweden, who's often called the father of the greenhouse effect in a sense, although he didn't use those words. But he pointed out the estimate by Hogborn, who said, "Well, look, if if carbon dioxide is is four ten thousandths the atmosphere." What would happen if I took all the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and compressed it into a solid, into a solid carbon or a carbon compound on the surface of the Earth? How thick a layer on the Earth would it form? And he did the estimate and found it would only be about one millimeter. One millimeter. And that led him to say, well, look, if I think about the amount of carbon that's fixed by living systems over the surface of the Earth, that could easily be comparable to the carbon in the atmosphere. And therefore, living systems might affect the carbon equilibrium on Earth. And if you think about the fact that we've been burning fossil fuels here, which is basically carbon fixed in the uh, below the Earth, uh, for over 150 years, uh, only burning effectively a layer one millimeter thick would 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 double the carbon in the, in the atmosphere. So clearly, humans can definitely affect the carbon abundance of the atmosphere. And that was recognized um, almost 200 years ago, which surprised me, at least, when I first uh, learned that. The last thing I wanted to mention was something about the greenhouse effect. I mean, people often talk about the greenhouse effect being the fact that sunlight comes in and, and it's, the atmosphere is transparent, but the Earth radiates in infrared radiation, and, the, and that's absorbed, a lot of it's absorbed in the atmosphere, and that creates kind of a blanket that heats up the Earth, which is, keeps the Earth warm, which is certainly true. But the interesting thing about the greenhouse effect that's relevant for understanding how things change when you add carbon dioxide is not what's happening at the surface of the Earth, but rather, rather what's happening at the tip of the Earth's atmosphere. Because in equilibrium, when the Earth isn't heating up, there's as much energy from the sun coming in as going out, which means the Earth has to radiate as much energy going out as the radiation from the sun coming in. Otherwise, it would heat up. Now, what happens if, if I increase the uh, carbon dioxide and increase the uh, absorption of, of, of infrared radiation in the Earth? What happens is, if you think about it, the Earth is radiating into space at the tip of the atmosphere, the point where it becomes transparent to space. If, okay? Now, the, it's cold up there. 
Now, in order for, at, at that point, in the, at that surface, the Earth is radiating an amount equal to the energy coming in from the Sun. But if the, uh, if the absorption by carbon dioxide increases, then the point where the Earth's atmosphere becomes transparent and begins to radiate into space will be at a higher elevation. But at a higher elevation, the surface is cooler because things cool down as you go up. Now, the energy radiated by a hot body goes as it turns out to be the fourth power of its temperature. So if the Earth is radiating at a higher elevation where it's cooler, it's radiating less. But if it's radiating less, effectively, it, then there's more rate energy coming in from the sun than going out, and the Earth will heat up. And what, what, what that means is, essentially, you'll have to heat up to the point uh, at that higher elevation is now basically as warm as it was earlier at the lower elevation, so the Earth is, is uh, radiating more or less the same amount of energy. But if, it, if it's gotten hotter up there and you extrapolate back down to the surface of the Earth, the surface of the Earth is hotter. So really, the, the, what's called radiative forcing, the, the, the effect of increasing carbon dioxide, is to change the elevation, if you wish, where the Earth radiates into space, and that in turn has a feedback that relates to the temperature of the Earth. Uh, that's one of the things I've discussed, of course, in, in, in more detail, along with the history of the greenhouse effect and, and some of the um, uh, simple but important predictions you can make based on really fundamental physics. Well, I hope that helps a little bit, and I hope uh, if you read the book that you enjoy it. Take care.